Hello, welcome to this edition where we shall be discussing about the, the different grid systems we have in the Stellarium. Previously, I said I was going to talk about this. So right now, I want to talk about it. So in the Stellarium, you have this equatorial grid and we have the azimuth grid. So we're going to be exploring the equatorial grid first. So it got, this is the color of the grid, okay? So this is the southern earth, southern pole, and if you rotate it, you can see how these grid lines, and this is the north, this is the north, the north pole of the earth. And this is the, the northern equatorial grid, the northern pole of the equatorial grid. I'm sorry, I had to turn on the halo of my mouse so that you can see where I'm pointing at. You know, this, um, this equatorial grid is similar to the Earth coordinate system in that um, the Earth coordinate system, if projected to the stars, forms this equatorial coordinate system or the equatorial grid. So if you observe that the lines, these lines here, I will call these ones vertical lines, and these are these other ones, these concentric circles, are the horizontal lines. Let me just use that as an analogy. For the Earth coordinate system, we call these vertical lines the longitudes, while for these concentric circles, we call them the latitudes. But for the Earth, um, the longitudes, these vertical lines, are measured with respect to the east and west. Why, for the latitude, we measure it, we measure it with respect to north and, and south. Uh, but another difference is that the Earth coordinate system rotates with the Earth, while the the equatorial coordinate system stays constant in the sky. It doesn't rotate with the Earth. So that is the, the major difference. Also, observe that these lines converge here towards the northern hemisphere, but what we saw before, they disappear. They disappear from the from the southern hemisphere. The reason is because it is hidden. The the southern equatorial pole is hidden from our horizon. The reason is because from where I am recording this video, which is in Nigeria, uh, we are closer to the northern pole than to the southern pole. But if I were to change my location to any country in the southern hemisphere, say South Africa or Zambia or even Argentina or Australia, I would be able to see the the grid, the point the 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 southern pole of the equatorial grid. But I can still see it by simply turning off the ground. If I turn off the ground I would see it. So this is the the southern pole. So bringing back my ground, I said that um, right ascension, these vertical lines and the concentric circles, the declinations, uh, for the earth for the earth coordinate system, we call them latitudes and longitudes, and I said that they are measured in. Uh, with respect to the north and south and east and west, but for these we measure them in angles. So for these the concentric circles, we measure them in angles. So if you observe these angles here, if you observe these angles here, this is the for the concentric circles. Let me start from the zero point. This is uh, this is the zero. This is the equator. If you observe this. This is towards the western. This is the zero, and it increases 
it increases up to 90 if you count it very well and also if you go below that if you go beyond the zero degree mark you will see minus so this is look at this is the zero the minus 5 minus 10 minus 15 all the way to minus 90 so that is for the that is for the right ascension so that is right that is for the declination why for the right ascension um, we can also measure them in angles but um, for convenience astronomers have divided the sky into 24 hours so we measure uh, right ascension with respect to hours so you have uh, each of this line represents one hour so you have one hour you have this is the 17th hour 16th hour 15th hour so you can trace it let me turn off the ground again so that you can see all the all of them this is the 10th so you can observe it very well here so the convergence the convergence of these two lines give us the position of a celestial object for instance if i turn off my atmosphere i would like to view the stars if i want to know the position of this object here you can trace you can trace it from the right ascension and the declination although it is going to be very difficult for you but if you click on your stellarium if you click on that object you would see the right ascension and declination here you can see it from here this is given in hours this is right ascension I told you it's in, it's in hours why this is in declination is in is in degrees and it is positive so anytime you see a positive angle it is towards the north and let, let us point at an object in the southern look at this object you see this what this is a uh, right ascension is negative because it is towards the south so that is how we do these things so let's get back to the northern pole and uh, turn on the ground all right so you know there are stars there are stars that would never ever set if you are in any location in the in the northern hemisphere and you're looking at these stars over here these stars over here they would never ever set we call them the second polar stars so let me just turn on the timing so you look at the stars they are only rotating in this fashion they don't set okay they're always there and you have this other star called the polaris we call the northern we call it the northern star the people that are going to the observers that are going to see that are those observing from the northern hemisphere if you continue to observe you see that these stars are setting they rise and set but if you continue doing that and go towards the southern southern pole you would notice that there are some stars that can never be spotted they don't ever rise so but if you want to see them you can uh, you can turn off the ground so those are the stars they don't ever rise so if you're observing from the from northern hemisphere they would never ever rise let me bring back my ground and move over to the northern pole 
So the next thing we're going to see is the other grid called the azimuthal grid. So following our our equatorial our equatorial growth system is the azimuthal growth system. Let us first of all turn this off and turn this on. Wow. This is the this is the azimuthal equatorial system, and similar to the equatoria, we, we have these vertical lines. They have these horizontal lines. The horizontal lines, or the concentric circles, like we saw before, are called the altitude. But unlike what we know about altitude, we measure altitude in terms of meters, but in astronomy, we measure it in degrees. The altitude is measured in degrees. And we have this other vertical line called the azimuth. We measure them with relative to the northern, to the northern pole of the Earth. Okay? And by the way, another name for this azimuthal grid is the local grid. It is taken as if you are you are at the center, like where you are right now. So you can imagine that you are standing in the field and you have this grid surrounding you. So you can use this local grid to pinpoint this the object that you want to see in the sky. For instance, if you want to measure this object, you have to measure it like this. You have to measure it like this and go up. Okay? So the angle here. And you go up so the angle there is 20 degrees so we have from the north to the south sorry from the north to the east is 90 degrees east to the south is another 90 degrees then from south to west is 90 degrees and from west to the north is 90 degrees making it 360 degrees so the two the, the two coordinate systems are measured in degrees both the altitude and the and the azimuth so for instance this is the moon i would like to know the 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 coordinates of the moon from a local coordinate system of the azimuth grid azimuth grid you can look at that this is the azimuth and this is the altitude. So this is 253 degrees. So this is measured from the north. So if you rotate from the north to this point, like you want to go in circles, this is about 253 degrees, while the altitude is 22 degrees. So this is how we measure this. So if you look at that point where the two uh, grid lines merge, we call it the zenith. The zenith. So it, it, it is taken as if you project yourself to the sky, this is where your, your height is. This is where you should be pointing at. So this is your, this is your height. So we can as well try to combine the two coordinate systems. Combine the two coordinate systems. You can use them to know the position of objects in the sky. Look at that. So this is for the local coordinate systems and this is for the for the equatorial coordinate system. One more thing I want to point out here is that for the local co coordinate system, it changes with location. For instance, if you move from one city to another city or from one country to another country and you stand in the field in different places, you're going to be pointing at different points in the sky. So that is why it is going to always change. But for the equatorial it's not going to always change so 
for instance, if I were to be in a, if I change my location to somewhere in this place, let me, I want to still somewhere in the Europe, you would notice that the local coordinate system would come closer to the equatorial coordinate system. Look at that. Came much closer. So, because the equator the, the azimuthal or the local coordinate system changes with relative to where you are, while well, for the equatorial coordinate system it stays constant with relative to where you are.